Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Midgard and Middle-Earth. My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, joined, as always, by my friend Grifflet, who has some questions about the feng shui of Aragorn's pavilion. Um, on the one hand, this certainly reflects the fact uh, that Aragorn is not only a hard-working, but a cultured fellow, as here in the back portions, so that's, of course, where we are here. We're in the back. It's uh, I love the little partitions. Uh, the little folding, tasteful folding screens. I wonder, I, I, they must have brought the tasteful folding screens out of the city, right? It's quite a large number. So like somewhere, maybe in one of the guest houses, right? They had like this large supply of folding screens uh, that they carried out and uh, uh, erected here in Aragorn's pavilion. Uh, but anyway, you know, so we've got all these, this is where we were having the, you know, the little meeting, council of captains last time. Um, but he has uh, uh, several work areas, right? Which again, tastefully, not like hidden away, uh, so as to suggest, you know, secrecy and paranoia, but, um, you know, uh, I, I, you know, tasteful discretion, right? Uh, and, but then in the back, on, so on, on, on either wing, you've got one of these like sitting work areas over here. And then you've got the, um, the non, not technically yet royal bed, which is still made and he's not been in, of course. Um, and, then, and then you've got what I assume is Aragorn's personal desk, right? And on his desk, you have a map and a bunch of other like correspondence and things. And then just like this propped open book open to the title page. Like, you know, in his free time, there's like uh, some improving reading for him to be doing in addition to in addition to uh, to the rest of his work. Um, but like with the desk and his work sitting open there, right, like confronting the beds so that he's staring at it while lying in bed. Um, you know, that's not a great look. It's it's uh, hard to rest that way. But then again, since he's never actually been in this bed, uh, you know, I suppose that. Um, doesn't matter quite so much. Um, <laughs> you, I don't know, Edith. I'm not sure I believe that. That they haul this stuff in the same truck the orcs use to carry the hanging cages of corpses that show up at every recently conquered town. Yeah, yeah, the skeletons. Yeah, yeah, the pre, the uh, the 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 pre decomposed bodies of prisoners. Yeah, no, it's it's um, uh, it is true that the orcs have shown very significant dedication to that concept, and they probably do have some mobile ones to erect in a hurry. Um, yeah. <laughs> JJ, I'm sure you're right. There's a new printing of the Lay of Lathian. I'll, I'll need to read that in my spare time. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure that's what Aragorn is reading. Maybe what Aragorn is reading over there is an advanced copy of the poetic works of J.R.R. Tolkien. Now that, I could easily believe. Um... Anyway, okay, so I'm just about to. We're gonna we're gonna do the fu the funeral today, the post Pelennor Field funeral. Um, and um, and and I'm and we're we're finishing up. We're gonna head off to Northern Ithilien today. I'm excited. I'm excited to move on to the next segment. Um, we've been Minas Tirith centric for a long time here ever since we came through Osgiliath we've been in Minas Tirith and in the area round about all the way up through into Tower Druidine and then we've been in uh, and, and we've you know gone all the way through the city and done all the things in the city and then of course we did the whole battle and now the post battle sequence uh, so after a long time here in the uh, greater Minas Tirith region we are moving on and uh yeah, it certainly has been over a year. Cer certainly since we finished Osgiliath and arrived at Minas Tirith, for sure. Um, but um, anyway, so um, okay. But let me finish off. Let me finish off the tasks first. Um, so I've got Prince Emmerhill and Elfhelm to speak to after the the council of the captains. So that's that's epic quest line, and. Um, uh, why do these spring instances show up here? That's not what I'm looking for. Um, right, talk to Aragorn to start the funeral. Let, I, 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 I like closure. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, distribute uh, armor here first. That's one of my few like 
minor quests still hanging around. So this is my uh, my quest from Angbor here. I've uh, I found some extra swords. I found some um, I found some extra armor here. Handsome, sturdy-looking armor. Nothing but the best for you, man. Nothing but the best. Uh, no, I don't think, not only did Narnia not do the Sunflower Quest in Even Dim for the Spring Festival, I'm not sure I have ever done anything at the Spring Festival with any of my characters at any point in my life. Festivals are not, a, I just, there is so much story for me to catch up on in Lotro. Whenever I play Lotro, like, I just, I never, I don't festival, usually, um, because I, like, grudge the time that I'm spending in Lotro. And I, there have been a couple times that I've gone at it, for story reasons especially. Um, it looks to be my size! I like that. Um, <laughs> guy's super enthusiastic. <laughs> so, I, I'm, I, it makes me laugh in particular because it reminds me of, like... Um, you know, when my wife tries to take me or my son's shopping, right? <laughs> it seems to be in my size. <laughs> like, it's, it's sort of what, um, uh, this is like, a, it's like a fantasy reaction that my wife would, uh, would, would like to see. Um, uh, did I do it once? Maybe I did. Maybe I mean, there, I could, there have been some cool ones that like, often people will like alert me to particular, uh, uh, like lore or story rich, uh, uh, th uh, you know, quests or sequences that get included in the festivals. And, um, like for instance, the Mad Baggins play, right? Which I've done several times. Um, uh, but, um, yeah. Anyhow, no, I don't, it's is about Gondorian herbalists in the name of certain flowers. No, I don't think I have done that one. I don't think I have. No, I really don't remember ever ever being at the spring festival um it's in even dim i've definitely not been there if that's the case i've never I've, I've been to the yule festival a couple times i've been to the autumn festival once no a couple because you know the with the maze like the halloween one um i've been to the there's one that's in the shire um I saw that once. I didn't really do anything there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, but I didn't, I didn't like enter it. I just like saw where the festival ground was. Um, but, um, oh, it takes you to a numinous briefly. Okay. I see. I see. Okay. All right. I, I got all my, my armor distribution. Let me go back to Angbor, turn this quest in. The gleam of new forged armor should breathe courage and pride into any soldier's heart. May fear take hold of no man. Boy, Angbor the Fearless really leaning into his new name, right? Let's get more. I tell you the Haradrim were dauntless. My men and I held against wave after wave of them until I saw that we must gain some advance advantage or be worn down to defeat. I led a charge and drove them back to the river where my archers rained down arrows upon their rafts as they came across. It was thus that we rebuffed them, though not without great effort. The men here on the Pelinor are wearied, but still they must train. Will you go down to the sparring area and put their new armor to the test? They could surely gain from a combat tip or two from such a seasoned campaigner as yourself. Love the use of that phrase. A seasoned campaigner, of course, is what Baragon calls Pippin in the book um, when Pippin asks for lunch. Uh, I love that line uh, from Baragon in the book. Really glad they worked that phrase into the text there. Um, okay, talk to a soldier at the sparring area. In the pavilion? Uh, you mean in the area here, not actually inside the pavilion. I did not see a sparring area inside the pavilion. Um, where is it? Uh. Is it actually inside the pavilion? Surely not. 
This is a place of, like, discussion and work, not sparring. Maybe it's around behind. Hello, is there a sparring area back here? Hello? Huh. Is the ring to the east? I didn't see it. Was there... Was, oh, there it is. Okay. Aha. Gotcha. All right. Nah, this looks like a sparring area. I was looking within the boundaries of the fence there. Hey there, young recruit. Are you excited about your armor? We can only hope that yes, you are. Will arrive before it's too late. This armor fits... This armor fits well! Let us see how it holds the combat. Great, good. You're doing excellent. A little friendly combat. Good. If it's well, thank you. Stop beating on me, please. Okay. What do you say? Shall we train? Oh, I should uh, probably talk to you first. Let's... You can only hope that the Rosarine will arrive before it's too late. You're sure the armor is impenetrable, huh? Good, good. Confidence. That's excellent. Yep. Okay. Stop eating on you too. I'll spar with you when you are ready. We'll be ready. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Huh. Oh, Rohirrim dude. Hey there, Rohirrim dude. Rohirrim dude with a war hammer. Am I certain it will protect you from a Morgo blade? No. I mean, that would be a little bit rash to be certain of. Quite sturdy. There we go. We can agree on quite sturdy. Hey, you know, if you've got to carry a hammer in your hand in order to emulate Helm Hammer Hand, like, no shame to it, right? I mean... Okay, good. There we go. Thank you. Uh, good. All right. I have pummeled all of the recruits. Let's see if this satisfies Angbor the Relentless as far as quest giving is concerned. Yep, hell up great. All right, there we go. Is this a... What? This is redoing them. Isn't this the same ones I did? Are these new? I'm... I'm... I'm confused. Repair armor? That doesn't sound exactly the same. Gathering supplies? I totally did these. Didn't I do these? It doesn't say it's repeatable. Is what's confusing me. But I think... Yeah. I think I've completed all those. All right. In which case... Wait, those aren't repeats? Oh, okay, fine. Okay. They just sound so similar. Didn't they have me gather supplies before? But I mean, they weren't labeled as repeatables, so... Fine, Angbor. Bring it on, man. Bring it on. Sure. I can pack. I'm a good packer. 
It's just like packing the mood case. Our smiths are taking a much needed rest. Fine, yeah. Forge blades. I can do it all. Repair armor. Okay, shouldn't I have repaired it before I distributed it? Yeah, no, I have not gotten these supplies before. Yeah, no, I was I, I I knew it didn't look like a repeatable, but I I I feel like he sent me for supplies, swords, and armor before, right? I mean like it So it's not the same quest. It's just an exceptionally similar quest. I feel like this set of quests is a sort of test. Like, are you really a completionist? Right? How committed are you to this concept? Are you willing to do practically identical quests? Will you run errands almost, you know, without limit? And the answer is yes. Yes, Grifflet is willing to run errands. Um, yeah, I agree. As Drosnik says, with many of the rangers dead now, um, Angbor has to take up their duty of delegating menial tasks to, to Grifflet. Yeah, no, that's that's clear. Um, that's clear. All right. Well, let me let me let me queue up a lore question here, uh, which I certainly should have time to answer while I do all of these uh, tasks. Um, ooh. Uh, Fingen120 had asked, um, in I think the Book of Lost Tales, which is correct, Tolkien mentions the sleeper in the Tower of Pearl. Did Tolkien ever explain this? Delightfully, no. Um, the sleeper in the Tower of Pearl. There are some, like, names and titles that are like a myth in themselves, and that is one of my favorites. I love the sleeper in the Tower of Pearl. Um, context, what context there is, which is not an exceptional quantity of context. Um, uh, it comes, as I recall, in the, um, in the story of Eärendil. So originally, the story of Eärendil, like there's the whole I'm going to Valinor with the Silmaril thing, um, but that's not sort of the first story of Eärendil. The first story of Eärendil, um, like the that is the thing that like most of his adventures were meant to be, uh, was. Um, voyaging, right? I mean, he was the greatest mariner ever. He was a great seafarer. And so Tolkien had planned in his original version, that is like way back in the Book of Lost Tales, he had planned to have this long series of adventures for Eärendil um, on the high seas. It was like going to be this uh, sort of like sequence of... Um, uh, there was going to be this sequence of... Um, uh, voyages and adventures that he was going to have. Very notably, um, this was going to be... Uh, this was the section of his adventures where he was going to meet and kill Ungoliant. Um, this was how Ungoliant was going to meet her final end. Um, and uh, anyway, so... That's one of the most famous of them. But among the... And, and by the way, Tolkien never wrote these. Um, he did not get very far at all uh, towards this. Not even really reasonable outlines. The furthest he got in actually writing these stories. And it's it, it remains <clears throat> the whole sequence of uh, adventures that he was looking to give to Arendel remains one of the most kind of like... Um, enticing and elusive um, stories not told, right? That we knew that Tolkien was thinking of, but that he never did tell. Uh, it would be fascinating to see what he actually would have done with these. Um, but all we have are really sketchy uh, notes 
about what his plans were, uh, uh, what his plans were for the, um, uh, for Arundel's journeys. And he lists several, like, um, adventure topics, right? Like things to see or quests to achieve or whatever. And, um, he, uh, so, um, oh, hang on, there are crates I've got to fill now? Where are the crates? Hang on a second. Where are my crates? Okay. Uh, there they are. Okay. On the wagon. Over here. Sorry, Ingold. Uh, anyway, so the, he mentioned several of these adventures. And um, the uh, some of them are really... like So, for instance, if I remember correctly, tree men, like Sam's tree men, who are giants, um, were listed here. So he was going to have encounters with giants. Um there are so many different places, especially in Tolkien's early writings, when he was obviously planning to have stories that involved giants, like Jack and the Beanstalk, traditional fairy tale giants, um, which is uh, you know a, a really really traditional you know big part of traditional English you know sort of folklore and fairy tales, um, and. Uh, and he never got around to it, like ever, ever got around to it. Um, the Lord of the Rings was the closest he got, actually, to doing it. Um, he, uh, Treebeard, eventually becomes the Treebeard that we know and love instead of a giant, which is what he was supposed to be at the beginning. Um, but the fact that he actually got the character and the name Treebeard and um, even wrote some drafts in which uh, Treebeard was either alluded to um, and it seems, by the way, that the, the, the giant that was seen in the North Farthing um, by uh, Sam's cousin Halfast was a giant, not an ant, uh, originally, when Tolkien originally wrote that passage. And very likely it was Treebeard, um, that that was designed to set up the fact that, uh, again, in the very first draft, it was the giant Treebeard, the wicked giant Treebeard, as giants are generally wicked, um, the wicked giant Treebeard who captures Gandalf and holds him prisoner in a tower. That was the original plan for why Gandalf didn't return in time um, to meet Frodo, uh, to go off with him. Um, so that was probably going to be set up for that. And then later, when they get to Fangorn for the first time, uh, he wrote a draft of Frodo encountering the giant Treebeard. Um, again, legit, normal humanoid giant non-entish giant treebeard um but then he ditched that and that's when then uh it was in the process of like revising that sequence that boom treebeard the treebeard chapter emerged in one draft pretty much um so um anyway point is that this among the places where he you know put a pin in the idea of like I'm going to put I'm going to do a story about giants here was in the quest for Air, the quest of Arendel. Um and um uh the but one of the things that Arendel was going to do was find and wake the sleeper in the tower of pearl. Um and he never did explain who the sleeper in the tower of pearl was and what that adventure was. Um, but like it's in all caps, the sleeper in the tower of Pearl. Um, and again, I've always found that so evocative and interesting. Um, and I have no idea what that adventure was meant to be. There are some hints or implications, I think that possibly later on he was that it could be Elwing. Um, not as part of the adventure, but like, Anyway, but it's, I don't think that Elwing was the sleeper in the Tower of Pearl. I think that um, uh, he 
I think that what happened was he kind of quasi recycled like the tower that Elwing lives in. Remember when when they get to Valinor and the two of them stay in Valinor and he gets sent up in his ship and she has a tower and from which she flies up to visit him in the form of a bird still at times. Um I think um I think that her Elwing's tower is like Tolkien recycling the Tower of Pearl thing from like the story that he never told. Um but what that original story was, no idea, but uh it is I would I would say to to me it's like one of the top 5 most tantalizing bits out there. Um uh that I really really wonder what the sleeper in the tower of pearl would have been. So it's a great question. I don't have an answer to it. I don't know that there is an answer to it. Um unless Tolkien wrote a poem about the sleeper in the tower of pearl which is going to be released uh in the in the you know the poetic works of Tolkien that's going to be released in September which can you tell I'm excited about that I'm excited about that Angbor I'm also excited about finishing Angbor's tasks I commend you on the quality of these blades I am sure those who use them in battle will best their foes well that's kind of more than I can speak to. Good, good. Now we are one step closer to marching east. Yes, I packed for you. Thank you for your diligence in assisting the host of the West. Hey, diligence is my middle name. Okay, and that's it. That's it, Angbor, right? No more errands? Fine. Excellent. So glad to hear it, Angbor. Happy to help. Um, okay. And keeping an eye on my XP, I'm going to let it creep up to at least half. Because when I do, um, then I'll, and then I'll tortoise it again. Because um, when I do untortoise, then um, it's, um, I, will, I often want to gain a level pretty quick at that point. So I might as well let it keep running until I get close to level 110 and then stop it. All right. What do you think? Funeral first or epic first? Let's do funeral first, because the epic will be moving forward from here. All right. Come. It is time. It is time, Aragorn. After much bloodshed and loss, I have asked everyone gathered at my pavilion to rest and mourn the deaths of our brethren. Yes. Okay, so I'm trying to see where we are here. Okay, we're just... Oh, this is the sparring area. And the great pyre right next to... Um, Snowman's How. Okay. I bestow the honor onto you to light the pyre. <sighs> really? This is never easy, Grifflet, but it is important. If we are to go on, we must take some time to remember those we have lost. These men died for Gondor, for Rohan, for every land in which dwell the good-hearted. We have constructed a great pyre, and by its light we will remember our fallen. Will you accept the task and the honor of lighting the pyre? Once it is burning, we will begin. Okay. I got you, Amir. Aragorn's still holding back, huh? Let's see. Who's it? We got Dervorin. Ah, oh, here he comes. Uh, in oh, sorry, am I standing in your spot? Sorry, sorry, Aragorn. Um, Dervorin, Glaoina, still sad about Theoden, of course. Kutha, Nothmar, Thane of Gaphold. Wow, yeah, that takes me back. Elfhelm, Gambling from Helm's Deep. Who we got? Who we got? Imrahil, Ingold, Gullisgill, Rosarin, Weedfada. I didn't know that Weedfada survived. I, I got that mixed up. Oh, who, who was? I'm confusing him with the banner bearer, um, which is not the same thing at all. Um, you remember Weedfada? He's the one who um, uh, could detect the sea breeze coming and told Theoden about it. And of course he lived because Theoden says that if what his if his words be true, then may he live in honor 
Uh, yeah, so Theoden kind of like blessed him with survival. Do, all right, doing here. Are there other folks over here? Sorry, man. So sorry about the boys. Okay. All right. Let's light, let's light up the pyre. So many good men gave their lives to protect our lands from the enemy. Oh, a nice gradual lighting of the pyre. We are gathered here to remember those who gave their lives for us. Hear their names and do not forget them. Guthlaf, banner bearer of Theoden, lift your banner high, loyal one. Good old Guthlaf. I remember meeting him. Thane Harding, Aldor of the Eastamnet, and Reeve of the Wold, your son will be proud to hear of your courage. He was grumpy, but he was faithful. Elfmar of Faldham, you were an inspiration to every man of the Elfward and to all who knew you. My son, says Elfhelm. Oh. Dunhera, Lord of Dunhero, we fought side by side at Rider's Stand, my friend, and I weep that it was to be for the last time. Herubrand, Reeve of the Stone Deans, you put your faith in the words of Hildegard and met your end with satisfaction. You fought valiantly until your very last breath. Grimbold of Grimslade, doughty soldier and veteran of many battles, farewell, my friend. Good old Grimbold, my favorite of the Marshals of Rohan. Thane Torforth of Torsbury, even so young you had already accomplished much for Rohan and for Theoden. Fastrid, Reeve of the Sutcrofts. We did not agree on all matters, my friend, but we shared a love of Rohan, and she feels your loss. He was feisty. Hedafara, stalwart defender of the Stone Deans. The Helmingas know of your glory. The battle seemed endless, but still you fought on. Theoden King, Lord of the Mark. Rohan has been restored to glory by your deeds. Farewell, uncle. Oh, that's a beautiful tribute. We must not forget any of the other good men of Rohan who fell upon Pelinar. Men from every reach of Gondor fought to defend their homes. This is Imrahil now, right? Yep. Duelin and Derefin of the Blackroot Vale. They did not fear to face any foe despite the danger. Alas, my boys. Turgon, captain of the South Gate, long did you stand against the orcs, even when all seemed lost. Yeah, shout out from Engold there. Hirluin, lord of the Green Hills, you spoke seldom, but when you did, you spoke with wisdom. We could use such words now. Boy, he could send someone on a quest. Forlong the Bold, lord of Lasarnach, many were your deeds, my friend. May you rest easy. Good old Forlong. I love how Burgle was so excited to see him. Forget not the many others who fought and fell in service of Gondor. My kinsmen came out of the north to the Pelennor in my service. Many will not see their homes again. Idrin Fair, you were no stranger to the dread of battle. I thank you. I don't remember Ithrin Fair. Ithrin Fire. Hal Ross, how long has it been since we shared a campfire on the green fields? Too long, my friend. You will be in my thoughts. Guardian of the Shire. Nyglunk, how many were the foes you slew in my defense? I will not forget you. You have my thanks. Where was, um, oh, so where was Nyglunk? Ithrin Fair was in the Haunted Inn in Mirkwood, right. Lest easy, Kelleront. You lived up to your promise and were a true ranger of the north. Okay, help me remember the rangers. Kelleront, where was he? Nestadron, ranger of the trackless wastes. Your wandering days are done, my friend. Mandan, few only could share your knowledge of plants and herbs. I will treasure your lessons on the subject. Okay, Nyglonk was in the Bone Vales. Okay. Wow, Galadir, the days of your sorrow are ended. Join your daughter in peace and know that I will not forget your service. 
good old Galadir. Halbarad, my dearest and dearest and most true of friends, my heart was lifted to see you again on the road to Isengard mere days ago. Gosh, that was much more recent than it seems. For you to fall when the uh, when the aim for which you fought is so near, it is a grievous hurt. I have lost my right arm. Kelleront was at Thrassi's Lodge? Oh, man, that, of course, that takes it back. Farewell, my friend. Kelleront, Thrassi's Lodge. Holy cow. That means he was like, at least for people, like for characters who start um, uh, over there, uh, one of the very first rangers you ever meet. Wow. Kelleyrant. Yeah, I, I knew I recognized the name, but, I mean, it's been so long. Um, we met Nenestadron at Echad Dagaras. Okay. Yeah, he and Longlaus were there. Okay. Right. Right. Doing, 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 uh, doing chores. Right. Okay. How about Mandon? Where do we meet Mandon? Came from the angle? Okay. Yes. All right. I'm going to mourn. <clears throat> Amir mentions motions that he wishes to speak with you. I would like to honor Snowman. Come. The pyre will burn until morning, and the heat of the burning will carry our grief into the night sky. There is another creature of nobility we should remember, Snowmane's steed of the king. Come, let us mark the spot where he died, and we have buried him. Uh, you mean where this, like, really fancy marble tomb has already been erected? But, okay. Let us walk in stately fashion. Oh, do I get to... Put a stone on his cairn. Okay, nice. Uh, maybe not stand on the cairn. It's not good form, Griffin. This grave shall be known as Snowman's Howl forevermore. Let these words be written upon the stones. Faithful servant, yet master's bane. Lightfoot's fall, swift snowmane. Good. They didn't change it. I'm glad. Morning has come. Let us return to the city and climb to the citadel. I would visit my uncle where he lies in state and pay my respects to him. Oh. All right. Oh, oh in the citadel, right. I was, like, thinking we were going to the Houses of Healing, but of course not. We have arrived. My heart is full of sorrow, but I would look upon my uncle's visage and think upon his life and deeds even so. Uncle, I am here. I am now King of the Mark. I hope to have the strength that you did. I hope that I will lead as you have done. You have restored Rohan to glory. I will not fail to uphold her name. Rest well, Theoden, son of Thengel, King of Rohan. What's he holding? Is that, is that, oh, it's his sword and it's sheathed, right? Yeah, it's his sheathed sword. I thought it was like a, a scepter or something, but I see. It's, it's the sheath that was confusing me. Okay. This has been a long night. I have said all I can. And now the rule of Rohan will be mine alone. It is a heavy burden. I hope to live up to my uncle's example, but it will not be easy. Still, I will do my best for the people of Rohan. Thank you, Griffith. I am ready now to depart. We could all use some rest before we march. 
Yeah, maybe Aragorn could actually take a nap. Soon the march to the Black Gate will begin. Now we rest, for soon the march to the Black Gate will begin. Okay. All right, still not getting the file of amber extract. Is that a we are to march shortly. Is that a wallet thing? Do I have lots of files of amber extract? I do. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um Grifflet, we are to march shortly. Is it true, as I have heard, that you are known to the rangers of Athelion? Yeah. I mean, okay. Pretty sure I achieved that rank. Hang on. Let me check. Rangers of Athelion. Uh, rangers of Esteldine. Oh, boy, that takes you back. What were they called? Do they, were, are they a faction? Rangers of Athelion. Oh, no, hey, yeah. I'm most of the way to friend to the Rangers of Athelion. Yeah. I'm totally known to them. Absolutely. In fact, I think I'm their ally. So I'm beyond known, Aragorn. <clears throat> Will you search for any who might still hide among the ruins of Osgiliath? It is my hope that they might help us help guide us through Athelion and on to the Black Gates of Mordor. For sure. Be happy to do that. That sounds great. Moving on to Osgiliath. We're crossing the river again. Eomer King has given me command of the main force of the Rohirrim. Some 3,000 still a horse. It is to the west road we will go to hold it against the enemy that is still in Anorian. Okay. What's your play, Neymar Hill? This must be the greatest jest in all the history of Gondor. I love that they gave him that line. His line from the book, right? My swan knights have scoured the nearby lands of Gondor for fighting men. They report that three and a half thousands will march for Mordor with Aragorn. It is as fine a total as any for which you might hope, and proves the courage of Gondor, so fresh from battle and still hungry for more. But this must be the greatest jest in all the history of Gondor, Grifflet. We march to assail the Black Gate and the impenetrable land of Mordor with fewer men than might have formed just the vanguard of the enemy in the mighty days. It brings to my mind a child threatening a mail-clad knight with a toy bow or a buzzing fly seeking to sting a man working in the hot sun. The Dark Lord will smile and knock down the child or squish the fly in his palm, and that will be the end of it. What else is there to do but laugh at the jest? It is no jest. Okay, so he uh, says it but doesn't get the... Uh, okay, Eric Gandalf does have the response. That's, of course, it's all still part of the Council of the Captains in the book. I think Imrahil has wrongly judged the mind of the Dark Lord. The Prince of Dol Amroth, <clears throat> the Prince of Dol Amroth believes that Aragorn's army will be as a stinging fly to the forces of the Dark Lord. He is not wrong that these seven thousands are a mere pittance to the number Sauron houses within the Black Land, but it seems to me that Imrahil has wrongly judged the mind of the Dark Lord. <clears throat> yes, we go to sting the Dark Lord, but he will not squish us for all our buzzing. No, he will seek to trap the fly and take the sting, all unawares of our deception. On that deception, all of our fortunes rest. It is the secret fly that bears the most dangerous sting of all for Sauron, and let him remain blind to it until it be too late. Our secrecy was born of necessity, but now it must end. We have moved in secrecy ever since I came to know you, Grifflet. It was a secrecy born of necessity, for we needed every advantage we might attain in our struggle against the Dark Lord. Whispered counsels gave rise to hidden errands and close-guarded conspiracies, but no longer. While Frodo continues his quest in the shadows, Aragorn strides into the light, and he must draw Sauron's gaze to him, and away from the real purpose, with every means at his disposal. Let the departure of Aragorn's army be a loud one, and snare the attention of the Dark Lord. Wars are fought with weapons, but this battle for Sauron's eye will be fought with noise and tumult, with musical instruments and those who wield them. 
walk the Pelennor, and find men who wield trumpets of silver and brass. They will announce the coming of the king as loudly and as often as they can, and perhaps this loud departure will serve as a shield for Frodo and Sam as they walk in the Black Land. After you gather four trumpeters, travel to the western gate of Osgiliath, and Aragorn's army will begin its march. I will see you at the eastern gate of the city after the army is on the march. Wait. Western gate of Osgiliath, you'll see me at the eastern gate of the... And then come... Okay. I'll get the sequence, I'm sure, Gandalf. That's fine. All right. So, uh, Aragorn is sending me off to Osgiliath, but first let's finish up and get the um, trumpeters here. Oh, hang on. I got one right in here, don't I? Hey, you uh, play the trumpet? Oh, what's going on? Kulang. This trumpet belonged to my friend Araneth. You seek trumpeters to proclaim the presence of Aragorn now that he has revealed his true claim? I am not as practiced as some others in Gondor, for I have only lately begun to learn the skill. But I would be honored to use my meager ability to announce the arrival of my chief and lord. My friend Araneth bore this trumpet on his person when he was slain at Tur Morva. I picked it up to save it from the hands of treacherous men, and I thought I might teach myself its use as a means of remembering poor Araneth. I will use it to proclaim the coming of King Alessar, and it will remind me of the friends that gave their lives so this day might happen. All right, so we got a ranger trumpeter. Well, an am a ranger amateur trumpeter, but that's all right. I'm a big fan of this quest. Uh, I uh, was a trumpeter myself, so. Calibram. Okay, so we get, here's a Gondorian trumpeter. I fought in the battle and saw more than my share of death. As the afternoon wore on toward evening, sometime during the waning hours I lost both my sword and the trumpet I carried on my hip and suffered a knock upon the head by a heavy club. When I came to again, my sword was gone. It must have been taken by a foe or a friend who thought I was slain. My trumpet lay by my feet, battered and bruised even as I was, but still whole. I have taken that as a sign, and now I will be a trumpeter and not a swordsman. I will be honored to wind my horn to announce the coming of King Alassar, Grifflet. Let the sound strike fear into the hearts of our enemies and give them such a fright <clears throat> that they will never again threaten Gondor. Uh, yeah, I am... Um, a battered and bruised trumpet is also something I can, I can relate to, remembering the trumpet that I used through middle school and high school and college. It ended up fairly bruised. I will be pleased to sound my horn on behalf of the king. So this guy is... Hmm. Uh, he's just from the city. Okay. I was inside the city when our friends from Rohan joined the battle, and my heart soared to see their charge. So inspired was I that I mounted a horse and followed the Prince of Dal Amroth and his knights through the gate and into the throng of battle. I was near at hand to Theoden, King of Rohan, when the great beast descended and spelled his doom. I saw then the most beautiful woman I have ever seen or ever will see, as she stood between her fallen lord and the dreadful foe, and slew that terrible creature in defense of her king. A great evil took me then, and I swooned. I think I dreamed, but I cannot remember the details of it. When I awoke, I was in the houses of healing. Friends tell me I was saved by the hands of a stranger, of curious visage and few words. I would find this man and give him my thanks, but he left no sign. There are whispers that King Alessar may have worked his healing arts in the houses, but who would believe such a thing? No king would trouble himself with my hurts, surely. In any case, I will be pleased to sound my horn on behalf of the king. Okay, so we have uh, like a, a citizen of Minas Tirith, a soldier of Gondor, a ranger. This guy must be from Rohan, right? Oh, look, we're already rebuilding here? Replanting things? This already looks post- battle here.
doesn't it? This place always have these nice bushes and things, even in the battle. Um, oh, no, not Rohir, after all. Is he from Dal Amroth? Is his middle name Bariadir? To think I have lived to see a king once more in Gondor. I have mastered many mus musical instruments, but I am most skilled and loudest with the trumpet. Yeah, well, that's a trumpet thing. I will be my, it would be my pleasure to sound mine at volume on behalf, my, sound mine at volume on behalf of the king. Oh, to think I have lived to see a king once more in Gondor. My heart leaps at the thought of it. You will have no problem getting me to start. Getting me to stop will be another thing entirely. Also a trumpet thing, I can tell you. Right, Kulang was the ranger, but now I was wondering if there would be a, if there would be a Rohiric one as well. But it, it's not shocking that there isn't, because, you know, it's, it's about, like, welcoming the king of Gondor. But yeah, that guy was a totally authentic trumpeter, right? Any any of you who have played the trumpet or have known trumpeters <laughs> who have played in bands and wind ensembles will probably recognize that guy as a totally legit trumpeter. Um, okay, no, it's cool. I, cause I, it's a Gondor thing, right? I mean, it's to to announce the king. Um, so that's uh, that's fine. All right, so now we go to the western entrance of Osgiliath. I'm going to war steed it here. Okay. All right. So I think that's it. We're pretty much done with the power in our fields now. Aragorn kind of sent me on ahead, though. I feel like before I set them going, I should go see about the... Hang on. What's going on here? If not for the healing arts of Ithrian, I would have perished in the battle. Who's speaking? Amlan. Okay. You see some familiar faces within the western entrance. I made use of my stealth to slay many foes during the battle. Fire on. These are some of the rangers of Athelion that I'm supposed to hang out with, right? No, they don't. They look like the old rangers of the north. Nathadon. Hang on. Sorry. I'm uh, hitting the wrong button. Okay. Oh, hello. I did not think that I would see you again so soon. This is the guy with the wagon, right? With the nails and stuff. I had rather hoped my father would let us remain a while longer in Imloth Meloe, but when he heard that the battle was over and he made us depart at once, the flowers of Imloth Meloe are breathtaking and beautiful, and the roses are quite a sight as well. My father promised Lord Angbor that we would bring our stock of uh, Kelman, Kemenduro liquor to the Houses of Healing as soon as we were able, and we have done so, also satisfying our writ with Galangam. But now my father has that look in his eye once again, and he has made us come to Brokenos Gileath over the Anduin instead of heading for home. Perhaps you could suggest that he and I return home? Or maybe if that is too far, we could turn our wagon in the direction of Imloth Meloe and make sure the ladies of that place fare well in our absence? What, in the absence of their menfolk? Come on now, Nethodon. Um, Bandron, okay. I am proud to say my fortunes have changed for the better. Ah, Griffith, any good friend of Lord Angbor, and we are good friends now, I can tell you, would be a friend of mine. But you were my friend first, I dare say. I have not forgotten our encounter in Tarlong's Neck. We met at a low ebb in my fortunes, any man would admit that, but I am proud to say that those fortunes have changed for the better, and all because of my son. He has always made me proud, that one, and I defy any hobbit to doubt it. Oh, yes, he's always been a gem and greatly appreciated by you. We did need to leave Imloth well, Meloe in rather a hurry, but that is no fault of my Nethodon. 
I did not like many of the glances that the fair lasses of that place gave to my boy. Uh, what were they? Uh, you think the lasses were a threat to his uh, maiden modesty, were they? And I deem that should the battle have kept us there any longer, I might have lost my apprentice and gained a daughter of the law. And that does not bring in the coins. Well, it depends on who the daughter of the law is, really, if you think about it. No, we left at the first opportunity, and now another opportunity has presented itself. Do you know what that opportunity is? Bandron pauses for dramatic emphasis, waiting for you to guess. At last he continues with a shout of triumph. Nails, Grifflet! It just so happens that with tremendous foresight, my clever and enterprising son, Nethodon, has caused us to come into possession of two barrels full of nails, as I am sure you remember. And do you know what is in great demand following a battle? Nails of, ev of the very sort we possess in such quantities, and which we can sell to the craftsmen repairing the city and the bridges at a better than usual rate. Just doing my part as a man of Gondor, my friend. <laughs> Just doing my part in war profiteering and <laughs> fleecing the rebuilding efforts. <clears throat> anyway, and if it allows me to set up my own shop in competition with Galangam, well, that is the merest coincidence. There are still enemies hiding in Osgiliath, however. If you were to defeat, to defeat some of these foes, I would appreciate it. Yes, clear the way for the entrepreneurs of Imloth Milui. Okay, Firon stood duty as a burger tra burglar trainer in Enidwife. Right. Okay. Okay, yeah, he was in Enidwife. I, 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 I could tell, because he's not in green. He's in gray. Like, the gray ones are from the north, and they color code themselves nicely. Um, okay, so... Now we're into Osgiliath. We're looking for rangers... We're defeating enemies. Hmm. Hang on a second. I was just checking to make sure I didn't um, uh, give me morale. Uh, make sure I didn't get any cosmetics that I overlooked. I didn't think so. But okay. Still crossing into Osgiliath. Aren't I going to go into the Osgiliath mini-map at some point? Like the blow-up of Osgiliath? No? There we go. Now entering Osgiliath after battle. Oh, I can't... I don't like it when there's, like, no convenient place to put the thing. I also wish I could change the size of this thing sometimes. Um, okay, where are we? Court of Anarian. All right, my Osgiliath geography is returning to me here. Um, I can't hide it. Yeah, well, that's okay. Then I'll want it again. Um, so, hmm. Just straight through to the Court of Isildur is where the um, rangers are, apparently. So, anywhere hereabouts is a... Okay, there we go. There are some orcs wandering in separate groups that I can more or less pick off, I think. Okay. A new Slayer deed in Osgiliath? So if there's like a separate post-battle Osgiliath Slayer deed? Surely I qualified for Slayer deeds before. Oh good, these are all just sort of sitting here. I don't feel like waiting for my stealth to renew though. Come up one shot this guy. 
And that brings me up to five. Okay. And I've still got more down here. Okay. So I should be able to just duck through here that I can return, hand this one in and get to finding the rangers. I wish there were a way I could decrease the cooldown of my sneak. I mean, it's only 10 seconds, but still, I kind of grudge it. Oh, he just turned around at the inconvenient moment to prevent himself from being one-shotted. That's really annoying. Okay, it looks like I get a defiler as my final... As my eighth here. Okay. Great. Oh, go to the eastern entrance. Okay. I thought I was going to have to go back to what's his face? Mr. Nail Selling Entrepreneur. Now I just, yep. Well, that was a lot. I mean, I'm still assuming I'm going to get sent around Osgiliath a little bit. Oh, look, see, now that the good guys are in charge, they've erected guardrails. You know, like, you know, yeah, guardrails, which are to code. So much better. You can tell. This place is now in good hands. Ah, and highly effective barricades as well. How delightful. Good job, guys. Actually, those are unusually effective barricades. Out here in the court of Isildur. What are they doing to protect against Muma Kill? I hope beating the bushes, I hope. I mean, it's right in this area where the Muma Kill are likely to be hiding, I can tell you. Hey, you guys have really improved this place. Not sure that I would be sleeping right out in the roadway, though. I'd maybe pull that back a little bit if it were me. Okay. I think this is my contact. Mablong! Good to see ya. What you been up to? What tidings do you carry this day? Griffith, it is good to see you again. When last we spoke, Osgiliath was lost to the enemy and war was at the doorsteps of Minas Tirith. We have watched the tides of battle turn from atop the Dome of Stars. We slew coward orcs as they fled the battle, attempting to take shelter in the ruins. But tell me, what word do you bring out of the White City? Why came you here? You tell Mablung of the battle and Aragorn's plans to march to the Black Gate. If this is the path they will march, there is much to be done here in Osgiliath first. But before we speak of those matters, talk to the other rangers here with me. Glothier, Mirthel, and Arador in particular. It has been too long, and they will surely be glad to speak with you again. Sure, yeah, glad you guys moved up out of the basement. Oh, hang on, what you got here? Many of the buildings in Osgiliath are no longer standing or are partially collapsed from the conflict here. I would like you to search the few remaining structures for any supplies you might find. The Easterlings or Haradrim may have stashed supplies in these buildings before they marched on the Pelennor. I hope that no foes remain in those buildings. Ah, oh, that seems unlikely. Search the Dome of the Stars, the House of Healing, the Palace of Eldakar, and hidden, find hidden supplies. Great. Okay. So I've got, what, a little less than an hour? Let's see how much progress I can make on us Giliath quests. Arador. Well met. 
When I saw the darksome clouds finally give way, I shed, tear I shed my fears of the evils lurking in the Morgo Vale. I feel in my heart these great lands are not truly threatened any longer. Excellent. Yeah, you were kind of spooked about Morgo Vale. The red is a bold statement, Eridor. I mean, coordinated with the green, right, looks a little bit Christmassy, but, you know, you're really owning it. And I think that's fine. Myrthel. The earth has reclaimed the deeds of men and orc, fair or foul. What? The earth has reclaimed it? It is good to have you back upon the eastern banks of Anduin. It was my honor to scout the events of the battle before Minas Tirith and report back to Mablung. Many of us wished to join the fray, but wisdom and discipline counseled we few would better serve Gondor here. And truly, many a hurried messenger, many a hurried messenger, messenger and routed retreating foe fell to our hands. Cutting off their messengers is actually kind of canny, that's true. Gladir. Will you hear my plight? I still cannot thank you enough for rescuing me on your journeys. It seems the secret of my capture did not stay a secret for long. Many a good-natured jest has been made at my expense. Still, I have kept true to my oath and given all, given my all to thwarting the enemy at every turn. Still glad I rescued you, man. Okay. But gosh, that feels like a long time ago, considering all of the Minas Tirith action that has happened since I was doing those quests. Will you hear my plight? Let us speak of securing Osgiliath. We have done much to sweep the foes from this place, but some remain. While they do, they are a threat to the rear flank of Aragorn's host, to the guard of Minas Tirith, and to my men here. Try to truly purge our enemies here. We will need your help. Okay. I stand ready. Oh, I thought he was going to give me another quest. No. One at a time, huh? Fine. No problem. Okay. I think I vaguely remember my way around Osgiliath. And it'll be fun to see it reclaimed, filled with the Army of the West. All right. So we've got the Rohan section. Who was over here before? It was the um, Easterlings, wasn't it? Okay, right. Houses of Healing. So they're not using the buildings really for anything. The good guys, I mean. Okay. Got a new Osgiliath deed? Hang on a second. A look into Osgiliath. Journey to the Dome of the Stars. We'll do that. House of Healing. Check. Palace of Eldakar. Yep. Osgiliath culverts. Sure. Check, on, check in on the culverts again. This seems an eminently completable deed. Haradrim remnants, one of six. I only have one. Oh dear. This means he's going to send me on five other quests. I don't know. Okay. All right. Hang on here. Just clearing house. Complete quests in Palinar, right? Okay. Good, good. Right. Not getting ambushed by Haradrim. So I'm a little confused by that deed there. It was January of 23 when I was in Osgiliath? Really? 
Uh, hang on, I thought this place might be bigger. That's it? Just this one room? With those, like, three supplies in it? Two supplies? That's it. Okay. That's it. So it was only 14 months ago that I was in Osgiliath? I've only spent one year in Minas Tirith? 14 months. I still have a quest marker on the Houses of Healing. It feels like it... Was there more? I mean, it's not there in the quest box anymore. All right, maybe I'll just trust it. Go on to, uh, yeah, Dome of the Stars next. Okay, I arrived in the White City on February 2023. Okay. Yeah, because I wasn't in Osgilia that long. So that makes sense. Okay. So yeah. So it was a year, not just a year in Minas Tirith, but it was a year all the way through to the end of the battle. Not bad. Making excellent time. All right, there's the Dome of the Stars. Can I get through from here? Yes, I can. Oh man, I remember when these were a lot f more full of enemies than they are now. Oh, they've still got the skull banners up. I haven't gotten around to redecorating the Dome of the Stars. You know, the bad guys are really much more prompt about the redecorating. They'd have had skeletons and cages erect all, all along here already if it were them. Okay. I've searched the Dome of the Stars already, apparently. Let's see. Oh, I thought there were... Um, sparkles coming from a supply box, but it was just uh, sparks from the brazier. Oh, those stairs remind me of an instance I seem to have done two or three times in order to not die. Nothing in here? Oh, ha ha ha. Oh, cunningly hidden supply box. Okay. Let's see. There's one less cunningly hidden in plain sight over here. All right, we're getting some around this side. Quite a few, actually. I didn't see them at first because I was looking out in the middle of the of the dome. Got some upstairs too. I'm keen to complete this quest and see what it does to that strange Haradrim supply deed. Which I can't even really figure out if it's extra. I'm getting all these flashback memories of those really annoying spirits that were in here last time I was here. Oh, 
Yeah, look, I missed that box of supplies. Okay, surely number 10 has to be in here somewhere. It's the doors I'm picking up there. Okay, so a year ago today, I was with young Tolwyn and his mom Duneth. So I was I was the 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 Kyrandros folks, yeah? And up there, what's the name of that village? I forgot the name of the village. North of Minas Tirith. Right, so I was still doing these the, those outer quests before I went into the city. Oh, man. Okay, so it looks like I'm not going to get the last supplies here. I'm, in fact, going to have to go to the Palace of Eldekar. No problem. Okay. So I should be able to take the lower like the pontoon bridges down underneath. Crithost! That's it. Oh, yeah, they haven't redecorated these. Because see, these railings, I'm just not convinced they're to code. Just not. I remember coming through here looking for herbs. Yeah, so much nicer around here in, in the sunlight. That's, oh, come on now. I'm swimming it. I can swim it, right? Didn't know if it would let me swim it. But it looks like I will. Can I get up? Yes, I can. Excellent. Yeah, it's... I was not even really... Oh, yeah, it's the stairs I was looking for. Um, I wasn't even processing the radical difference that the sunshine makes here. It's really quite striking. Okay, back up to the Palace of Eldakar. This was the really sketchy place, wasn't it? Wasn't there like a Nazgul here or something? of my supplies and boom back to Mavlon unless there's something else I meant to find here but the other ones have not been very eventful so I'm going to assume no 
like that there's not going to be a quest and uh, another quest I'm going to pick up there okay got your supplies checked out your areas Let us these, help you bring glad tidings these friend. goods will be most useful yes they will I am certain that there are enemies still out there on Osgiliath. Search the city and find these craven lurkers. I was hoping you would give me this quest at the same time as the other one. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I knew you were going to give me a kill ten enemies quest. And so I was really hoping. Um... No, it's okay. Phil. I don't. I don't. I don't need to fulfill that quest. It just. It seemed oddly kind of dovetailed with the. The, yeah. I don't need to fulfill that deed. It seemed odd and oddly dovetailed with the quest. So I thought that maybe it was a reference to the quest. And anyway, that, that's. I was a little uncertain about that, but I, I no. I don't need to. This is where Grifflet draws the line. Oh. Does the ruin bat count? It does. Okay, fine. All right, so we've got a little pocket of orcs over here. Um. Okay, yeah, no problem. Nope. Nope, Griffith draws the line. Quest completionist, yes. Deed completionist, only under fun circumstances. Like, explorer deeds are fun. And I usually do them anyway in the course of doing all the quests. Um, slayer deeds are right out. Um, you know, some of the deed, like, statue identification deeds, obviously, that's a necessity. But, um, but yeah, I'm not just going to do all random deeds. Okay. Hang on. So while I was going to do it while I'm hunting. Let me get another uh, another uh, question. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. JJ, you had a book question. Um, uh, you've heard me mention in classes that the Middle Ages had various categories for different types of dreams. Is there a particular uh, work one could read to learn more? Yes. Um this is going to sound like a joke, but it's not. Macrobius's commentary on the dream of Scipio. So it's, um, it's a little complicated. Uh, well, like you wouldn't think that Macrobius's commentary on the dream of Scipio would be like a bestseller, but it totally was. In fact, Macrobius's commentary on the dream of Scipio was much more popular than the dream of Scipio. Uh, so the dream of Scipio was by Cicero and Cicero was like, he was, Cicero set out to write, um, like a Roman version of Plato's Republic, essentially. And if you've read Plato's Republic, you'll remember that it ends with like a dream vision sequence. Um, I forget the name of the dude who had the dream vision sequence, but, um, uh, anyway, uh, Scipio, or sorry, not Scipio, Cicero. Um, I believe I'm remembering this correctly. Um, Cicero set out to do like uh, the Roman version, as I say. And he, so he was like, I got to do it proper, right? So he, he emulated Plato and he ended with a vision, with a dream vision. But the dream vision that he included was a dream vision starring the Roman general Scipio famous general Scipio Africanus um, and Scipio has a vision where he is taken up into the third heaven and he looks down on the earth and kind of puts everything into perspective for him uh, so um, anyway um, so Cicero's work and the dream of Scipio at the end it was the dream of Scipio was everybody's favorite part. How many heavens are there? Seven. Um, but um, anyway, uh, the third heaven is, of course, the sphere of the sun. So, 
it's where you go to look down on the earth, obviously. Um, but, um, so the dream of the, you know, Cicero's work and the dream of Scipio that was popular. The dream of Scipio was the most popular part of that work, but even more, pop but, but then this guy named Macrobius writes a commentary on it. And the commentary on the dream of Scipio was really popular. Um, Oh man, I got spotted for my last guys. That's awful. Um anyway, so um in the commentary in Macrobius's commentary on the dream of Scipio. Macrobius's commentary on the dream of Scipio became one of the classic source texts in the Middle Ages about dreams and the different kinds of dreams. Um, is it an insomnium? Is it an insomnium? Is it a um, so yeah, those the 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 the, um, the different classes of dreams that you could have. Um, some in which you would have uh, so like if you just have a dream I believe if, if I'm recalling correctly I don't know that I'll remember all of Macrobius's ca uh, categories off the top of my head but like an insomnium um, is a dream that you have you know it's like when you dream about work basically right like you're doing stuff during the course of the day and then you dream about it at night that's um He's quick to point out there's no like prophetic insight going on there. That's just your mind continuing to. That's why it's called an insomnium. It's like you're sleeping, but you're not sleeping. Right. Um, whereas there are some other kinds of dreams. Like there's like a there's a somnium. There's a visio. Uh, there's a, there's different kinds of like uh, visions you can have when you're when you're when you're dreaming. Um, but um, anyway, so uh, so yes, the. The work that you want is Macrobius's commentary on the dream of Scipio, which is definitely available in English translation, written in Latin, of course. Um, all right, Mablong. Yeah, I th also fear there may be more than ten, yes. Myrthel has spotted movement among the shadows on his watch. Still, you have made a dent. Have you crossed paths with anyone not clearly of the enemy's army since you entered Osgiliath? Myrthel spotted two cloaked figures entering the city. Huh. While you were out hunting hidden enemies among the ruins, he spotted the two figures again. Will you try to find them for us? For if they be not friends, I tremble to think what they are or what trouble they might cause us. Are they spies of the enemy? Friend or foe. Okay. All right. Um, in the high archives, huh? Where was the culvert? Oh, maybe the big label culvert entry. Well, I'll save that for last in case a quest sends me there. I don't want to go out of my way. I mean, I believe that's the only thing I have left to complete the deed. But, uh, and so, you know, again, explorer deeds are fun. But I, uh, I'll wait until I get, until the, until I see if this quest takes me over there. Uh, so Phil's asking, is this where the phrase seventh heaven came from? I, it's hard to say. I don't know the origin of that phrase and different you know, traditions will do things different. I mean, like, so for instance, um, uh, in the New Testament, St. Paul talks about being taken up into the third heaven. Well, he talks about a dude, you know, who may or may not be him, um, uh, who he knows who was taken up into the third heaven. He certainly did not mean the same thing by the third heaven as Cicero did. I mean, that is, they didn't have exactly the same worldview and culture there so like what that phrase mean and so same thing with seventh heaven like it very likely means different things to different people so not 100 percent sure that i can like correctly gloss where exactly where that phrase comes from but um hello don and row here what are you two scalawags doing out here? Are you two skulking around or are you searching for skulkers? Aragorn bade us defeat a large troll, which killed many Gondorians. We tracked the elusive wretch until it took refuge in Osgiliath. We are unfamiliar with this city. The ruins have turned this place into a maze. Don't worry. 
You have found an expert. Eldon, what do you say? I had only one clear shot at the troll while we chased it, but I feel certain my arrow landed. Once the troll is defeated, let us meet where the rangers of Athelion uh, make their camp. No problem. No problem. I'll find him. Because I have something you don't have, guys. I have a quest map. Or maybe I don't. Shoot. Friend or foe. No? My quest map isn't giving me a hint? Well, you guys were staring on... Oh, ah, I do have a hint. Yep. I think I spy a hint. Uh-huh. Looks like the troll drove a wagon through this area. <laughs> the footprints are a little bit funny. Okay, no problem. He's lost a lot of blood. Okay. Yep, hot on his trail. Wait, where'd it go? Did it turn away? No. Hmm. Uh, I kind of expected that trail to end on are there more tracks over here did he keep going ah yes he did okay no problem found the trail again oh there's a wooden chest over here I wonder what's in there maybe the troll's hiding no, not the troll. But loot. That's fine. Okay. We're looking for more tracks. Or for trolls. Okay, I got distracted by that chest. Where so the oh, I see. They turned the corner. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. Still on the trail. The very subtle trail that I've yet managed to lose twice. Okay. Okay. Here we are. Sorry, I should stealth myself again. Okay. Back into the palace of Eldakar? Oh, okay, he's hiding in the Palace of Eldekar. I reckon. Yep. I am so correct. Okay. Injured troll just ahead. Aha! Gurkodar, huh? All right, Gurkodar. Let's see if I can get it. No, can't go around that way. Let's see if I can get a backstab in on you. Start off these festivities proper. Oh, you would turn around. Can't tell if I successfully stunned you, but it has become irrelevant. Okay, do I need to loot your body? No, I do not. I 
There might be a hidden supply chest nearby. For that deed, that's okay. I am not curious. Not even curious. Okay. So I gotta find out on an O row here, and I can't mithril coin back to them. Are they still where I left them? No, they are not. They are back at the court of Isildur, but I can't mithril coin for either one of my quests. So, fine. Let's be adventurous. Let's see if I can successfully warsteed my way there. That'll be an adventure. Okay. Going wide view, top down, wearing my invisibility hat. If I make my way over here to this way, there's this another chest that I'm not going to get distracted by. This will take me to the main bridge. Yes, indeed. Look at that. Grifflet's expert navigation of Osgiliath. He'll find Eladon and Elro here. The culverts are nearby if I want to go. Exp I do kind of want to see if anyone's still hanging out in the culverts. I thought there would be a quest there, Phil. I have heard from the rangers that they wish to rebuild Osgiliath again one day. Let us succeed in the destruction of Sauron first, I say. Then any thought of rebuilding may come after. Well, yeah, Eladon, Mr. Party Pooper. With the enemy in retreat and our forces on the march, there are bound to be many strong foes about. We must keep our wits about us. All the more, the farther we march. Okay. Solve the mystery there. Mablung. Though I know Aragorn not, a ranger will not lead you astray. How glad I am to learn the mysterious figures were two elves and known to you no less. May they and the rest of this Lord Aragorn's host march on to glory and triumph against the eye. How much do you know of the Variags, my friend? We have had little contact with these men from the east. They seem fell, but not mindlessly bloodthirsty. And from what I have seen, able, what I have been able to gather, care more for gold than honor or fealty. This is not idle gossip. A Variag Jarl, who goes by the name of Gurthilim, Gurthilm, has made signs that he wishes to parley with someone from the host of the west. While I trust him little, he claims he intends no harm. Would you go and meet this Jarl Gurthilm? Uh, and learn, if you can, his true designs. So I don't believe that we've met that particular Jarl before. Sorry, where did he say I was supposed to go? Right outside the gates, huh? Okay. A little parley. Okay. Man of Liar has a book question. All right. All right, hang on, Mithrandir. Not quite yet. I got a little skullduggery to do here first. And go to a little discreet meeting. I love these mixed groupings. Dal Amroth. Well, two Dal Amroth. Guy from Minas Tirith. Oh, here he is. 
Hey there, Mr. Variag. I can't find an attested source for what elves would have done on Matare and Yastare. Oh, boy, no, I don't have any ideas. Um... I don't remember any specific references to that. I'm trying to think of somewhere to point you, but I can't I can't think of any place. Yeah. Are you the one they sent? Good, then I will only say this once. My men and I are breaking our pact with the Easterlings, and indeed wish to sever all ties with Mordor. We have no quarrel with Gondor, the men of the West. We ask only safe passage. We plan to make our way back towards Khand, but to make such a journey we require gold and supplies. As a token of goodwill, we will divulge the location of a large group of enemies you seek. They're in Mordor. <laughs> what say you? You tell Gurthilm that you will discuss the Variax proposal with others. He nods a curt assent. Be quick about it, Hobbit. Surprised he knows that word. Okay, so he wants us to pay him to go away? That's essentially the proposal here? Also, seems a little premature, I have to say. I mean, yeah, this battle turned in favor of the men of Gondor, but surely a Variag allied with Mordor can't be assessing the situation and thinking, I'm selling my Mordor stock right now. Right? Like, there's no way like the Dark Lord is doomed. Like, that seems a, a premature conclusion. Be wary, my friends. Evil spoils these grounds. Yeah, no, there's not, there's definitely not something in the nature of Middle-earth. Yeah. I, um... Yeah, I, I I can't think of any specific, and there's nothing in the, uh, you know, like the, um, what is the laws and customs among the Eldar? There's nothing in there. Um, it's been a while since I've been through the peoples of Middle Earth. I'm going to do it in Mythgard Academy soon. Um, so unless there's something in there, which I don't think there is. Um, yeah. I'm really not, um, really not sure. Okay. He breaks his troth and sells his former allies' lives for his own. There is no honor in such a man. Mablung lets out a sigh. I do not understand these lawless men, nor do I trust them. But I would know the location of these enemies encamp these enemy encampments. Yes, I deem it worth the price. Very well. Collect the supplies and gold they seek. You should find what you need here within our camp. But, Grifflet, if they cross us, you are under no obligation to keep them from harm. So I have permission to slaughter them all, do I? Should uh, things go south? No problem. Okay. So I'm going to get some confiscated treasures. How? What? Okay. We're just... I'm just looking around for stuff, huh? Nope, that's the mailbox. That's another mailbox. Oh, hang on. Recovered treasure. All right, well, easy come, easy go with the supplies, I guess, huh? Man, there are mailboxes all over the place. Okay, some supplies here. Yep, sorry, I'm just pillaging your camp. I mean, it's for a good cause. And also, I will add that I, um, I'm taking fewer supplies than I brought in, so it's still a net supply gain.
right. Cut through over here. Oh, uh, look. It's Haradrim Supplies. These will not count because these are part of that deed. Especially since I blew them up, apparently. Yeah, we were not at all interested in those supplies. Okay. Ah, oh, you look like a man who won't miss one of these boxes of supplies. Oh, fresh baguettes. Oh. trying to find the particular box of supplies that I'm allowed to take amongst... Oh, it feels, it feels like the end of the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. Alright, I need one more... There it is. One more treasure. And then, what do I still need? Two more boxes of supplies? Oh, I'm back in mailbox territory. Okay, no, I'm not going to get that milestone. Shouldn't really need it. Can wait till I get to North Athelion. Supplies up here. Uh huh. There they are. Oh, yeah, no one's going to miss these. And then the last one was on the way out. Okay. All right, I'm coming close to the end of my time here. There it is, last box of supplies. I should be able to finish up this quest and then we'll see. I feel like I'm on the downward slope of the Osgiliath quests now, but maybe I'm wrong. Whoa. What's up with the giant bear? It's just a wandering bear came in out of the wilderness. That is huge. Have we even seen any bears this size? It's like as big as a loth bear. There's another one wandering in among the horses. That could really be a problem. Man, they grow those bears big around here. You have done as we ask. This is good. It means we trust you enough to work with you. The hidden encampment is located right beneath your feet. Now you have your information. Be on your way and give us safe passage. Do not cross us, though. We do not take kindly to such treachery. The culverts! Okay, good thing I didn't go down there.
Uh, what happened to the bear? Oh, there he is, just wandering off. By the deer who's just standing there. No problem. Yeah, I was wondering if, like, Grimbjorn was showing up. An unexpected army of bears! Which was one of the original five armies, by the way. Though I know Aragorn not, a ranger will not lead you astray. The culverts, of course! It has been impossible to search both the city and the culverts thoroughly. We used all we could spare on the ruins above ground and have neglected those underpassages completely. While I am not surprised they threaten you, this knowledge was worth their brutish dealings. Glavir has just returned and confirms that there are enemies hiding in a section of the culverts we had thought to be collapsed. The Variags were true to their word. I suppose it is up to us, then, to honor our half of the deal and let them pass unharmed through North Athelion. I will send word. If I were them, I would be going south. I mean, if you're going south and east of Mordor, I would go go away from the Black Gate. Like, just, just, yeah, I don't know. Grifflet, take to the culverts. Defeat the forces gathered there and make sure they do not have the strength to make trouble for the host of the West. All right. The last frontier. The last Osgiliath frontier. The culverts. Exactly. Especially when Mordor's enemies are marching towards the Black Gate. Yeah. Like, do you want to look like you're the vanguard of Aragorn's army? I mean... How far out of your way are you wanting to go to tick off the Dark Lord? Like, that's... Who, again, still doesn't really seem threatened, you know, in his base of power or anything. Okay. So we come through here. Bear right. Find the stairs down. I think we're going to... So I'll get to the culverts and then we'll do the culvert cleansing next time. Ooh. Here we go. Completed the deed. Explorer of North Athelion. Let's see it. Let's see it. Well, no, that's not what I wanted to say. Deed bestowed. Okay, Explorer of North Athelion. One of six. One of four. Quests of Greater North Athelion? Oh, so the Pelinor counts. Okay, so the Pelinor was the beginning of this next phase. And I've got the uh, complete quests of Osgiliath and Crossroads. How am I doing there? Look at that. Just at the curving point. And that counts the crossroads, too. So this means... And there will be a bunch of crossroads quests. So if I finish the Morgul holdout here, that'll be 6 out of 11. And that'll leave 5 for the crossroads. So I'll probably be headed to the crossroads soon after this, I would think. Um, okay, so tell me more about the explorer. Um, look into Osgiliath. I did that one. I'm going to have Treasure of North Athelion. Ruins of North Athelion and Haradrim Remnants. Maybe I'll end up doing both of those, or all three of those, in the course of pursuing my quests. I see. The Haradrim Supplies, yeah, that's going to be the Haradrim Remnants quest. It's fine. I'll lose the Haradrim Remnants deed. I I'm fine. Not a deed completionist. Not going to be drawn into being one. Um, ruins, I will certainly do. That one I'll complete, no question. Treasure of North Athelion, we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going back to, like, the Pelinor to hunt for Haradrim supplies to blow up. That's just not happening. It's fine. It's fine, like I said, not a deed completionist. Not even tempted. What title did I get? Athelion Inquisitor? That's a slightly unpleasant title. Okay, no problem. 
So this is the March of the King. So I had Farinorian. This is the March of the King. Look at that. I only completed one out of three of uh, Farinorian. Oh, yeah, the Lost Trail, the end wash. Forget about that one. Okay, and then after this, we get, uh, what do we get? The Wastes. And then Eastern Kings Gondor. Oh, right, for the return. Yeah, sure. Outer Gondor, Western Kings Gondor. Yeah, great. Oh, looking forward to those someday. But yeah, so we get um, the March of the King, which we're on now, and then the Wastes, which does not count Mordor because Mordor has its own tab. Okay, two different Umbar, t three Umbar tabs here. Cool, cool. Neat. And this is, what is this, the dwarf stuff? No. Not different, totally. Oh, right, yeah, no, that's the thing. Never mind. Okay. Oh, yeah, Ravanian is where we get all the dwarf stuff. Yeah. Sure. Great. Excellent. No, this is fun. Okay. Good. All right. Well, that's it for me then. Um, we will cleanse the culverts and head towards the crossroads next time. So perhaps, perhaps next week, we will complete the crossroads and um, get into Northern Athelion as we continue our inexorable, inexorable, quasi-completionist march to the Black Gate, um, enjoying the story so far. Thank you guys so much uh, for joining me today. I should be back here next week. Um, Next week is a fairly eventful week, but I should be here on Friday. Um, so I look forward to seeing you then and finishing up Osgiliath on the Crossroads. Thanks very much, everybody. Stay tuned for Druid's Fire. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.